됩니다. forests are like home to me. You know, it's somewhere I can just go to sit and think. It helps relieve a lot of stress. I've always kind of struggled with breathing and it's gotten worse. You know, I thought I had asthma at first, but I didn't. So I just went in and you know, they said that I had a tumor that was cancerous. I want to say I was 22 or 23. So, obviously that's pretty young to be diagnosed with something like that. It changed a lot of stuff for me. A lot of people in my family have cancer. I'm going through the same radiologist that my grandma went through. I went through a couple rounds of chemotherapy, then I was pretty much told it's not working. <laughs> We're gonna have to either take you in for surgery within this week or you're not gonna make it. So that was like my first life expectancy that I was given was either do the surgery or die within a couple weeks. So I had the surgery. There's no cancer in my lungs anymore, but before I had the surgery, it, it had spread. So today I haven't really done much chemo, mainly because of healthcare. I lost my healthcare when I switched jobs and haven't gotten any since. When I got that diagnosis, I was at a very low point in my life. It wasn't like, oh wow, I need to change this. It was like, oh wow, I can finally die. It was my friends that really brought me back. I reached out into the fandom and I made my friend Major. It's just fun to meet new people and that's really what I want to do in the fandom. I think we all have those moments in the fandom where we contemplate leaving it. I've had that moment when I got that diagnosis. Is this really doing anything for my life other than costing me money to get art? But the answer was yes. It was doing something for my life. I'm so nervous opening this right now. I'm always in here. I'm shaking, I'm like shaking. Oh. Seeing the way that suits kind of change people and the way that suits can bring other people joy is kind of what made me want one. I can put a smile on someone's face and not risk losing my job for not being a straight male. <laughs> Hero head. So this is like a partially painted head, but this is his head. Getting into fursuiting, making a fursuits was, it was kind of a random thing that I actually got into it. Uh, prior to doing this, I had my own printing business that I'd owned for a lot of years. When I received Acai that was made by Cyber, 
That was an incredibly special thing to me. It really, really impacted me in so many ways and it completely transformed my life. And I wanted to be a part of that, create these things that bring such joy and happiness to everybody. I sold my previous business. That gave me the capital to start this up. Every suit that I do is slightly different. I'm always looking at how can I improve it? How can I make it better? All right. Oh, I don't do that. So the suit that we're working on is Hero. Everything seemed normal, business as usual. Then out of the blue, I had a couple of people that poked me and say, hey, we'd like for you to put Hero's commission in front of ours. So I didn't know any story on it. I had no knowledge of what it was. But upon you know, kind of poking these people and getting more information and learning of his story, it's just like, oh my gosh, he needs to have that suit much sooner. So I use a piece of software where this is not him. <laughs> Uh, I'll take the measurements and I can basically plug those measurements into the software to go ahead and create all of the lines that we're going to need on this to create the pattern. The software then largely converts it over here to the two-dimensional side. Then I will output this pattern. I'll print this pattern out. Most vinyl cutters just only cut the vinyl. This machine's actually cutting the vinyl and the paper, so we can be able to just pull those pieces out and then Tetris them on the fur to get the best utilization of the fur. Because otherwise, trying to figure that out is just too much brain damage. This is just easier. See, this is going to be black luxury shag. And this piece down here, this is going to be white Arctic fox. Waff. This is going to be gray Arctic fox. Typical turnaround from the time that I start the suit until the suit is done is usually in the neighborhood of about two months. I definitely put this suit on the express path simply because the biggest thing he's fighting is time. It's, you know, the unknown. I worry about if he's going to like the suit. You're creating something that is this person's idea of who they are. Am I actually doing that? Am I, am I able to, to achieve what he was hoping this suit would be? He's actually coming out here next Monday, as a matter of fact, to take delivery of the suit. Uh, this is something I normally don't do. It's kind of a little bit, you know, it's a bit of an unprecedented situation. We're going to have this thing done by Monday, and it's kind of all hands on deck getting the suit complete. I was working a corporate job that I really did not like, and my sister saw an ad on Nextdoor that was like, costume maker, somebody with sewing experience preferred, which I'm a seamstress. So I came thinking that it was probably for, there's like a little theater in the town here, so I thought I would be like making costumes for the theater. And then I come to the interview and Ryan's like, what do you know about furries? Didn't know that much, now I know much more. I know a lot more work goes into it than I would have previously thought to the fur room, and I bring this. Could be this. I didn't know this business existed. I didn't know that there was an industry for this. <laughs> we were doing a family walk with our daughter and the dogs one day, and Ryan was outside, 
And he says, are you looking for work? And I said, yes. And so he said, would you like to work at Waggery? And I said, what's Waggery? I interviewed with him and he told me all about the business and I started working. What I love the most is when all the heads are in here and I can try them on when I'm working and stuff. <laughs> no, but I love when all the heads are in here because you kind of make that connection with the, the, the body because a lot of times there's just bodies and no heads. So it's really neat when you can kind of get a feel for the character of that person. There's so many projects going at one time typically that trying to keep each project straight in your head is often difficult. I would say this is probably like the fourth most complex suit I've done since I've been here. Maybe 150 to 200 pieces, just for the body. And then the head is a lot of smaller pieces too. We were, I was looking at, at the, like the map out of the body with Corey and trying to figure out, are these random pieces or do these? I think these are those triangles that we did off the back for the foot paws. What I'm seeing on the pattern does not match what I'm seeing in the pieces. Let's see here. This is this one here. This one goes in here, and this one goes here, and this goes in here. Let's see here. Yeah, what is that? So these are this top one. That that's okay, definitely. Yeah, I was positive that one. Was yeah, that correct. one is definitely not right. Okay, so we got some pieces that are missing for this project, and uh, if they don't get put in the right place, then it's a problem of everybody looking all around for something. Here we go. Part of fighting cancer is having support. You need a support network and feeling like nobody wanted me. It was just impossible. I had pretty much just lost everything. I stopped doing chemo. I stopped caring. My job performance went to shit. I gave up. And then there was the whole thing with my grandma when she got diagnosed. She's the only one that I ever told about it, that I had it. I remember her saying, you know, I don't want to bury my grandson. You know, I'm only 22, 23. She's 70, and she just cried. And that just kind of left me, you know, you feel like a piece of shit when you give up just on your whole life and you're going to hurt all these people around you. She had colon cancer. A radiologist had told her she was in remission, so she had beat it. And then she went back and they said, yeah, you're stage four. You're gonna be, you have five months at the most. <laughs> and she died like a week later. She wanted to meet my friend Major because I had told her a lot about him. And he agreed to fly up and then she ended up passing a couple days before he came. Instead of canceling, he flew all the way from Florida to Salt Lake to come to her funeral with me. Her passing is literally the hardest I've ever cried in my life and my best friend had to see it. But to me that proved he was in it for the long haul and that he was just irreplaceable. And I've never had friendships like that outside of this fandom. You know, internet friendships can be real friendships. We use this room for doing the 3D printing, uh, all of the mold pouring, all of the resin work that we do, just for claws. Uh, and uh, we do all the airbrushing. We basically use this room to get away from the fur. Fur and 3D printers don't mix well. Fur and resin molds don't mix well. So this effectively kind of becomes our quote-unquote clean room. But uh, we have this set up and then we also have a third machine over here. And this machine just got finished printing these. 
So these are a completed set of teeth and eyes. So what we do is go in here and clean off all the, the goobers and remove all of the support material. A few little goobers to fix, but overall pretty good. at Waggery Costumes. I am in charge of building the heads and just about everything that is involved with that. I've always been a painter, drawer, sculptor. Out of school, I dove right into the gallery business and got to learn a lot about fine art. Started my own business, providing services for artists, galleries, and museums basically got burnt out on that and I was desperate to find something unique. That's how I met Ryan, came for an interview and he explained furry to me and I started the next day. My kids knew what it was. <laughs> they were surprised that I wanted to do this. I kind of just like the sheer playfulness of it. It kind of seems like a a nice way to just to get out of yourself. People who might be extremely shy or might have some social anxieties. It's kind of a tool for dealing with that. It's really interesting. Flocking is something that's been around for a very, very long time. Typically where you see it is like in a car interior, you're looking at your center console, it's kind of fuzzy lined in there. Uh, this was just a way for us to be able to create a very matte black look of something, but also because they're fursuits, they want to be fuzzy. These will complete out the eye. Right now I have three 3D printers. Uh, two of these machines are larger. They're used for doing all of the molds. So, cause whenever we're needing, let me steal this from here, James. I sculpt a positive in the software. From that positive, I generate a negative, and that's what we print is the negatives. So that way, these are, these are clamshells that come together. We put the foam in here, the head bust goes down, the foam expands into the head bust. The foam we're going to use expands 15 times. Part B is the resin and the part A is really the activator. You only have 35 seconds as soon as they touch each other. foam is expanding and I want to just keep pressure on this. From the design to the printing to the prep, you know, you're, you're talking a good 10 hours. And then these, but the molds take, you know, nearly a day and a half to print. If you let it sit too long, um, the mold can really stick to the foam and then you've got a you've got kind of a disaster. <laughs> you know, in half an hour it'll be the tackiness will be gone. Hero 
is part of me and he is, you know, me. But at the same time, it's what he represents that matters to me. That's him. <laughs> That's Hero. <laughs> The name Hero comes from a wolf dog at Spring Creek Wolf Dogs. Working with him gave me a little more hope in life. You know, it made me feel like I had a friend when I was in a situation that I didn't know anyone. The design for Hero is actually from another wolf dog named Thatcher. I just kind of took the color palette from him. Hero is a werewolf. He's a werewolf. The inspiration for that came from my childhood, living with my dad. Fort Duchesne is kind of known as the Skinwalker Ranch. There's a lot of reports of UFO sightings and werewolf sightings, and my dad claimed to study a lot of this stuff. I hadn't talked to him for a while, and the last time he had heard from me, we got in a fight and I said something like, I hate you, and, you know, never got to say goodbye. So, and that's kind of what made me choose a werewolf as my character. That was a way for me to channel some of him. And ultimately that's what Hero is, it's just kind of a combination of people in my life that, you know, change who you are as a person. He represents showing people that you're not alone in the world. Despite how hard things get, you can't just lose hope. GAF, that's this one. This is Black Mink. Gaff, Waff. Ah, one I didn't mark. CF. <laughs> See if I can find any white super seal. Okay, it looks like I'll have to pull that off the roll. Too many bags. Too many furs. With Hero's head, his ref sheets show very snarly, or you know, mean type of wolf type of thing, and, and very intense. And he's like, "Well, in reality, I don't want to be that. You know, it's like I'm not that person. It's like my artwork shows that, but you know, as far as who I'm going to be in suit, that's not really who I am. So it's one of those scenarios of where it's like, okay, well, given what his character is, whether it's the suit that I'm doing here for Hero, or pretty much any suit that we make." The head is really kind of the, the key piece. It's what gives the suit a soul. Two down. Who knows how many more to go. This is the tedious part of doing this, but the time is not spent to do it right, the end result does not come out very good. up what kind of goes where. This is the arm right now. When I'm working on a fursuit, I mainly do the sewing and assembly of the pieces. Fursuits are a lot different than sewing clothing or household items or other things. And I'm learning to use machines I've never used, a lot more hardware that I've never installed. There's just a lot more that goes into it than I'd done sewing before. Working on Hero's suit, I've been paying a lot more attention to the detail and trying to make sure it's exactly what he wants. I hope it makes him really happy. So this is a chest and we use coil zippers so we can cut them as long as we need. It's super satisfying to see a big table full of fluff pieces come together into something that actually looks like a suit. And 
the hum of the sewing machine is one of the most relaxing noises. very fun to thread. This is supposed to oh, no, no, it's still not doing it. Oh yeah, that's because that's Yeah, because that's how the looper would catch yeah. it. Right? These things are such a fiddly mess to the falls fails, read the man. <laughs> I'm about to put the claws in Hero's hand paws. And these are the claws that have been pre-made by James. And these are resin claws. They're really cool. It's a little bit like magic to me. I don't really understand all of it. Um, but there's all these little loopers in here. There's a knife right here that comes down and cuts the fur. And as that's being cut, all the loops form these loops around the edge. So that's a super secure stitch. It's not going anywhere. Put my safety guard down so I don't cut my fingers off. <laughs> and then there's another line on the other side. He was talking to me about saying, well, if the suit's not made by the time I, by the time I pass away, um, then we'll give it to a friend of mine. And that just like, that was heavy. That was really heavy. And it made me realize that he needs, he needs to, you know, experience what I experienced. And so that's. That's why I wanted to bring him to the front of the queue and uh, make this happen because he's just, life is short. And I mean, he's 24 and I'm, I'm 46 and it's just like, you realize life is an experience, a gift. It's a gift of experiences. It seems like something so silly. It seems like something, it's like, it's, it's a mask. It's a costume. But it really is something so much more than that. And that's, that's was the realization that I, I had when I, when I got Asahi. 
this suit gives him to be the best self he is, but essentially, but this also represents him as the best self that he is. So I'm, I'm definitely, you know, putting that extra energy into making this be as amazing as possible. I was really touched by what Ryan offered to do. It makes me feel like we're not just making fursuits. It's nice to have your work mean that much. Cool to see it like so. Oh wow, look at that. These are people that I will see at cons over and over again. And I want to see them having fun. Today is basically, uh, we're going to, let's see, what all are we going to do? <laughs> I think we're gonna be ready to go ahead and glue fur onto the head. I'm gonna get the nose finished up, so I've got a pattern up the nose. Get the teeth installed. Create a tongue. After that, it will be some shaving. Then it's going to be the eyes. Airbrushing. It's not just a business. This is a passion, this is me creating you know, the things, something that I love and something that gave me such happiness and being able to recreate this and do this for, for others. expect when I go in there and see it for the first time. I tend to bottle a lot of stuff up. I don't express myself very much. I'm hoping it just helps me be less like socially awkward and engage more with people. Corey, Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, Corey. 
so. Face to put a face to the animal. <laughs> hey, so. good to meet you. Me too. <laughs> so yeah, we 3D print these and then essentially supply wax to them. He is way outdone himself, and I'm saying that now before I even see the thing. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> did an incredible job with that. Oh man. <laughs> you did so good on this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you're gonna do? Honestly, it's going to be a long time before I really know how to feel about it. It's been pretty emotional, honestly. Just seeing, you know, something that means so much to me and something that represents so much brought to life in that much detail is just incredible. <laughs> I still don't even know, like, how to process any of it. Even being here, it's just... Everything changed so quickly. Everything happened so quickly. I want to use it for charity events. Like, I've had ideas to do it for Primary Children's Hospital or for Huntsman Cancer Institute where I'm going. Help kids make personas or something. Ultimately, the goal is to just make people's days brighter. I never expected to get diagnosed with cancer, ever. Despite how bad it's been, you know, it still shaped me to who I am today. And I think that if I didn't have those experiences, I don't think I'd be as good of a person, honestly. You know, I think it's kind of shown me how to be more sympathetic to people. I've learned a lot about the power of the people that you have in your lives, like the impact that they can have on you. And coming here even has had a huge impact on me and it's made me even want to fight it even more than I did before. It's scary and it's not just like my family, but cancer rates in the United States are even skyrocketing. And a lot of it is due to the lack of access to health care. An ambulance ride is like, it costs more than a burial. So, no one should have to choose between dying or being in debt. <laughs> if 
you have a positive outlook on life, it changes who you are. I want to give back to the fandom what the fandom gave me, which was quite possibly a, you know, second opportunity at life. I personally don't think that I'm a very memorable person. You know, you might think otherwise, but I just, I want to do my part, I guess. <laughs>